Welcome back to another episode of Spooled Life Live. I'm your host, Ram Garcia, and we're in the beautiful Corpus Christi Roy's Bait and Tackle Studio, where we have just about everything in the shop. This is actually your first time here, right? Yeah, in the shop. You can, you can be an, another to attest that we have everything here. You could almost get lost in this shop here it's a big place right you better bring your gift cards you better bring your money right your credit cards because you cannot leave roy's bait and tackle without buying a little something or a little souvenir to take back home with you all right we're in corpus christi where the beach is pretty much at full capacity right everybody is here for the holiday Everybody's here to go fishing, right? We got a beautiful week end, low wind, high water, high water, about average, water. about average water, you know, ready to get those lures in the water or flies in the water, right? Sarge Custom Rods is back in the show 100%. We are full-blown Sarge Custom Rods unless, unless you're fly fishing, right? I don't know. We might have something in the works. Me and old Sarge over there, right? Sims Fishing Gear is keeping us nice and cool, nice and fresh on the water at Roy's, at Super S, at Eckerd's, at the Trade Center. Everywhere, right? Every, everywhere where you need to look nice and fresh and nice at church, right? If Whether you're casting the fly. Right, or you're casting the uh, good old fashioned lure, right? Kuyan crawfish, man. There is a season for crawfish, right? It is ending soon, soon. right? A couple months, maybe. Yes. Right, right. Maybe a couple months, couple weeks. I don't know. If you're gonna, if you're gonna eat them, eat them from Kuyan crawfish. They got the best, and the dude is from Robstown, Poco Cedillo, right? We're going to give Rob's down a little bit of credit here in a little bit, but not right now, guys. All right. Carbog Brewery, what are we drinking? What am I drinking today? We're drinking the Houston Astros. First impressions is Houston Astros, right? World champions. Carbog Brewing. It's recycled. It's 4.5 alcohol by volume, 15 IBU, 12 fluid ounces of beer. Let's see how it sounds when we open one of these things. Cito Corpus Christi to help you out when you get in a bind on the water. Sarge Custom Rods, JRZ Lures, my lure of choice. Forever last year. If you're going to keep them, if you're going to net them, forever last year nets. Those are the only nets that work. Coke Law Firm, Shanaz Coke. If you get in trouble while at the beach, call the law firm, guys. He'll save you all money. Stinky pants stringers. If you're going to keep the stinky pants stringers on your waiting belt, right? Cruising down the water, you want to catch some fish. You want to keep them nice and fresh till you get to the truck. Put them in the ice chest, right? Put them on a stinky pants stringer. First, I want to give a shout out to the Robstown Cotton Pickers, right? We're sporting them today. I'm sorry, Sims, right? Don't, don't just delete me off y'all's uh, team page, right? I'm supporting my my uh, high school. I went to high school here, actually. I mean, the team is nothing like 2001, but it's okay, right? You know, we evolve, you know? <laughs> but they're doing a hell of a job either way. Uh, shout out to them. I want to say they're playing right now for their advancement to the state championship. So shout out to them. Here's to y'all. Be safe. Play your hardest, right? You only get one shot at this, man. Well, you get four, I guess, right? <laughs> if you're a freshman, you get four. Yeah. If you're a senior, you get one more, right? And this might be it, right? So, guys, on the show right now, J.C. Gonzalez, I see a couple from Robstown already. J.C. Gonzalez, update us with the score. We don't know what it is. We, we're not there, obviously. I'm sure it's a full house over there. Stay safe. Stay uh, hydrated, right? And give it y'all's best. Here's to the Robstown Cotton Pickers. And to the Sinton Pirates. You know, I think they're going as well, right? Uh, uh, 
throw your team out there if they're in the uh, in the advancement stages of the state finals for whatever uh, sport they're at. I think it's baseball right now, yeah. predominantly. But here's to you all. What am I getting there? I'm getting like a like the citrusy, right? Refreshing, right? Uh, hoppy, a little hoppy on the hoppy side, right? It's good. Five three symptoms up. Shout out to them. Depending on the game today, guys, I might have to take this shirt off, right, and and put a Sinton shirt on. I mean, as long as we're representing a, a local town, right? Another shout out, even more exciting than the Robstown Cotton Pickers. I'm not sure if we could even trump that, but today is somebody's birthday. I want to wish a happy birthday to Mr. Roy from Roy's Bait and Tackle. The Roy of Roy's Bait and Tackle, 80 years old today. Here's to you, Mr. Roy, to your legacy, the legend. Mr. Roy from Roy's Bait and Tackle. Happy birthday, sir. 80 years old. Mm, that one tastes a little bit better. What am I getting off that second? Always the second one tastes a little bit better. I'm getting like, uh, like if I'm at Whataburger, if I just ordered a number two. They forgot my jalapeno, so I'm walking back up. Right. And I'm like, hey, y'all forgot the jalapenos, you know. It, oh, well, guess what? We're gonna fix it. You want us to fix it? You know, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Or or you want us to give you the jalapenos on the side? No, I want you to fix it. Okay, well the, the second one is on us, right? That's what I'm getting right there. That, that that feeling you get, like, holy shit, I'm about to get a free number two. That's the kind of feeling I got right there. All right, guys. So we have a hell of a show. We've been gone about two weeks, I think, from our last show. And we're keeping the tippets in the air, yep. right? Correct me if I'm wrong, right? I'm, I'm <laughs> trying to visualize myself throwing my fly rod right now. You want to keep your your keep your rod high, rod high. right? Ninety degree. Well, yeah, just keep it at your one, two. Keep it at your one and two, right here. Yep. One, two, one, two. I got none other guys. It was a pretty pretty far trip, right? Yeah. But you know, yeah. right? It's pretty. You pass by a Prasex. Yeah. Right. Did you stop and get any of the beef did, turkey there? It was you did. Pretty packed. Oh man, yeah. dude, it was packed here. Oh yeah. It's packed everywhere. Everybody's on vacation. Everybody's getting out of the school already, and everybody already passed to the second grade. And Everybody's my daughter. You know what? Shout out to my daughter passing to the second grade, and all the kindergartners and the high school kids. And uh, my daughter's school only goes up to the eighth grade. So shout out to all you all. Shout out to uh, Coach Polo. I forget his last name, but shout out to him. There was, a, I forget what it was, the Kids Heart Challenge. So whoever got raised enough money, they were going to spray down Coach Polo. Okay. And my daughter was one of them. We raised quite a bit of money. I think my daughter was one of the highest raisers there at school, right? Yeah. Everybody was excited. Shout out to you all keeping the... Keeping the pump there at the schools, you know, they, they got to have that stuff, man. You can't just go to school and expect, right? Learning is the most important part, yeah, right? Yeah. We get it, yeah. right? I don't want to mention the, the school, right? Because they're not a paid sponsor, but I'm just kidding. I don't know if I can or not, but it cannot just be all about the books, right? Sort of you know, it was exciting to walk in there. We walked in there to check it out, and it was cool to, to to see the kids excited, to see Coach Polo excited, and everybody was, you know, he was uh, shot, die, and stuff like that, and slimed, and it was pretty cool. Shout out to the to the kids there at, at school, and everybody that's graduating. It starts now, right? The journey starts now. You thought going to school for all these years was bad. It's about to get a lot worse, but there's a reward at the end, right? There's always a reward at the end. The journey starts now. Keep it up. Keep it going. It's going to work out in the long run. You want to make a lot of money so you can come spend it here at Roy's Bait and Tech, right? And a lot of fly stuff, right? It's expensive. 
Hey, you know what? I can go on and on about me. I told you I was, right? And I'm not even done with this first one yet. So tell us a little bit about yourself now. So uh, I'm Gabriel Rivas. I'm a fly fishing guide I'm from the Houston area. Yeah, lived there my entire life and born and raised and fish over there for the most part. I mean, I'm kind of all over the place. You know, right. usually fish from Sabine all the way down to uh, Matagorda. So I've got a, quite a big area to fish and right. bouncing all over the place. I always tell people uh, wherever the fish are biting the most, I'll be at. So right. Always on the move. So you started fly fishing right off the bat? No, so I come from a bait fisherman family. Okay. Big family, always fishing. And uh I started fishing with lures as a you know, young young child. Yeah. My dad was the first to fish with like other than bait. So kind of learned from him. But I'm actually the first fly fisherman in my family. Oh wow. It was a whole big learning curve. Learned I was self taught. Yeah. And just learned pretty much oh, cool. on the internet. Yeah. What uh what got you to do that? So who who was who did you see online that was like, dude, I want to do that, you know? Because so, you're fairly young, right? Yeah, I'm 26. So you grew up in the internet age. Pretty much. The internet was already full-blown. Mm -hmm. You could already leave comments on stuff. and yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so so who, who, were you, who was your uh, angler that, that, that you highlighted? You're like, dude, I want that. I'm always fishing with this. I want to do that too, you know? So I started freshwater fish, uh, freshwater fly fishing first. Oh, cool. And I kind of just saw it on social media. It's pretty much all I knew. I didn't know there was a saltwater fly fishing deal. Oh, yeah. But the one guy who got me into it, his name's Brian Little. Okay. He's the owner of Sabine Skiffs. Oh. But uh, long story short, we were, I was fishing at a boat dock in uh, Bayou Vista, and he was launching one of his brand new boats. So the new model was coming out. It's called the Micro. My brother went over to him and was like, hey, man, nice boat. I didn't know who the guy was at the time. My brother ended up going on a demo with the guy. Oh, wow. Just ran along. Your brother's a fly fisherman no, as well? No, He was just a regular fisherman oh, okay. at the time. And my brother comes back, kind of told me, like, hey, man, that boat got real shallow. You know, we were going real fast shallow, and it was just the coolest thing ever. And I was like, what? I, didn't, I know nothing about that kind mm -hmm. of thing now. So I looked him up on social media and found out that these guys fly fish off these boats. And I was like, saltwater fly fishing? And that's what like sparked my interest in it. And I just kind of dove right in. I wanted to get better and progress. Yeah. I just always had that goal to get good, to catch redfish on the fly. And, you know, it started from there. And then you want to become a guide. So I never really wanted to become a guide until about two years ago. And it was mainly because I had buddies that were like, man, you're good at this. You know, you're always out on the water. You have enough time. Why yeah. don't you make this a living? And I kind of was a stay at home dad at the time. And I was like, cool. I got nothing else going on, so might as well, you know. Right. They think I can do it. Still don't know what to this day what I want to do when I get older, but right now I'm pretty cool with it. How old did you say you were? When I started fly fishing? Today? Uh, 26. 26? Yeah. So. Man, so you're pretty fairly young in the guide uh, world, mm -hmm. right? When you go up to the, I've seen it here, not too much, because I'm not much of a boater, right? I'm more of a kayaker right oh uh, i see it at the dock to where a new guy comes up and there's like a you're like oh you're the new guy you know what i mean yeah around these places i launch my boat first you know or you know stuff like that do you do you see that all up uh, where i'm from not so much i mean there i would say our fly guide community is fairly small mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't think the area i fish is fly fishing conditions we have a lot of dirty water right uh, for the most part it wasn't really you know the rookie moving in and having a little bit of hate from the older guys so it was kind of very accepted me coming into the community so right it's very very relaxed that's pretty cool yeah yeah you know most of the time you'll get that not i guess I w it wouldn't be i hate to say hate right but there's a lot of guides you know they're they're popping out left and right oh, especially wow. kayak guides oh yeah. uh, but there's a difference between there isn't not there. I don't know. Right. Correct. So, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a difference between a boat guide and a kayak guide. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. There might have the same credentials. Yeah. Right. But there is a difference. Is there a difference between a boat guide and a fly fishing guide? Uh, like, where do you stand on the pedestal of guides? On the guy, like, level? not you, but fly fishing, fly, fly fishing in general. I mean, 
I like to consider us all almost at the same level. Nobody's better than the other. We're all out there to catch fish and yeah. enjoy the water. So there's a lot of them that are better yeah. than the other, right? Mm -hmm. What I want to see in a guide business, I want to be catered to. Yeah, yeah. Right. I want. I want to be. I want to roll up to the dock. Right, dock. Right. Yeah, yeah. I want to roll up to the boat launch. I want to roll up to the launch, and um, I want to be taught something. Right which is super hard, but I want to be taught something different, right? And if, even if we don't catch, right? I want to be, I want it to be like a story yeah, yeah. coming out. You know, I want to, I want to get to know who Gabriel Rivas is and I'm going to be like, dude, you know what I mean? I want, I want my heart to be pumping. You know, I want to get off the truck and have butterflies. I want it to almost to be like, if I'm going to prom, <laughs> when I roll up to the boat launch. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, give me an experience to where catching fish is, is secondary, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Time on the water is primary. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's cool, right? Yeah. The, uh, we had a conversation before we hit the live button. Myself, Gabriel was here, Zach Gibson, and Brandon Hernandez was here we i made a comment to them i'm probably gonna mess it all up but i made a comment around the words of i feel like fly fishermen aren't afraid to lose fish right yeah. and the reason i said that you'll, you'll have give me your input here in a bit but the reason i said that was i've attempted to fly fish and when i am able to cast right it's a big deal when you're on a boat right if you go on a trip with with uh gabriel and gabriel i'm sure gabriel's gonna be like hey 50 yards dude it's coming it's coming at your two o'clock it's coming at your one o'clock so, you know get, get get your rod ready right when you're on a kayak you're your own polar you know so you're pulling your kayak, you're pushing with your paddle, you're pushing with, with, with your pole, whatever. When I see the fish that I'm about to cast to, I got some decisions to make. You know, I'm either going to put my pole down, my push pole, and then here comes the big decision, whether I'm going to pick up my fly rod or I'm going to pick up my conventional rod that I know for a fact for a fact, we'll catch that fish, right? Yeah. On a fly adventure, you don't have, well, I guess you could, right? Do you carry bait cast rods I, I and spinning bait. rods and yeah. stuff just in case? Uh, just in case. I mean, there's those guys that they prefer it more. Right. Fly fishing is challenging. That's yeah. the main deal. It's tough. Yeah. Right. Oh. So do you, what, what, right off the bat, what do you tell your customer? So, hey, let's let's start with the flyer, or how does that go? So, typically, most people, whenever we book a trip, ask them if, what they're wanting to use: fly rod, mm -hmm. light tackle, which is you know your bait casters, spin gear, and most for the most part, I take out pretty much only fly guys. I mean, I don't discriminate against you. You can bring whatever you want, right? But uh, if you're most comfortable with the fly rod, then we're gonna fish with fly. But if you want to throw a spinner rod, then go ahead. But never have I just you know. Somebody's having a challenge with their casting. I never kind of give them the easy, easy way out. Kind of just let them ease to me and kind of like, oh, this is getting tough. I'll work with their cast. And if we can't work that, sometimes they'll be like, hey, yeah. just let me see a spinner rod. I guess I'll cast it. But it never usually works that way. I'll work my butt off, try to get them on with the fly. Do you do on the, on the fly fly lessons? I do not do like on the fly fly lessons. Like the day of, like, dude, I don't even know how to cast this thing, you know? So... Early morning before we start fishing, usually what I'll have a client do is just, hey, show me a cast. Oh, really? A lot of our fit casting, and you know, like our fish, they're in their 30 foot range. Okay. They're very short cast. Yeah. Sometimes even closer. Right. Under your rod tip. Because it's dirty. The water's dirty, dirty, right? Yeah. I mean, we do get some clean water, but for the most part, it's dirty. Mm -hmm. I tell clients, I'm like, hey, this fish is going to be right at your toes. Most people don't believe me. They're right at their toes. Really? So, yeah, I mean, you just drop your rod tip, you know, fly lands in the water, big hook set. But I'll tell clients first thing, I'm like, hey, give me a short cast. So, you know, I want to see what I can work with. And uh, if it's too short, I'm like, all right, we'll give a little casting lesson, start the day off, try to get in that range where I know the fish is going to be at. 
and then we'll work from there yeah so a lot of times it goes out the window if people get real nervous when they spot the fish you know oh yeah i can imagine bumps and you start freaking out yeah tell people hey don't even look at the fish i'm gonna keep my eyes on him i want you to cast to the side where he's gonna swim to and once once you finally catch oh. it, then lay your eyes on So it. you'll tell him to strip or you'll tell him, hey, yeah. stop. You know what I mean? I'll guide him the entire way. Because like, most of the time they can't see it. They can't. Like, You're like, hey, strip, strip, strip. Okay, stop. And he's like, dude, what are you even looking at? About 80% of the time. Right? Every time. So when it's at, when you say most of the time or or maybe half the time, the fish is at their toes, mm -hmm. you on the platform can't see or can you still I can see? see? I can see. Or is it the or is it the angler that's up? Because he's up as yeah, well, right? Elevated, yeah. Right. Yeah. So is he, dude? I just saw one, you know. Or so. Or do you say, dude, you do not cast till I tell you to cast. You know. I tell clients it goes both ways. Oh yeah. Sometimes like don't cast if it's really dirty, where I know that elevation I have on the back is where I'm only going to be the one that can see. Right. I say, hey, don't cast until I tell you to. But if they can kind of see, I'm like. You see one before I do, because sometimes there's one that sneaks up right in front of the boat at 12 o'clock. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going to get mad. Yeah. Just send it. But if it's one where I'm like, hey, don't cast until you, I tell you to, then don't, you know? Man, I have so much fly equipment yes. at my house. It's outrageous. I'm like, okay. you know what? I have a starter, a starter fly rod and real combo. I'm going to give it away, dude. I think, I'm not sure yet. Yeah, yeah. Depending from here to my house, how I feel. It's a uh, Reddington. Okay, yeah. Reddington, uh, I want to say Red Start. Red Start? Yeah. Rod and uh, Systems. 678. A 678 size? Yeah, a uh, real. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to give that away. Not right now, though. But uh, I'm going to, for sure. Because, dude, I have so much stuff to where it's getting out of control. And I need to give I need to give it away yeah, yeah. to to a lucky winner, because there's a lot of guides, man. That's you walk into the shop, you know, and it's expensive. It it is. You know, you don't pay your typical, well, the traditional bait casting, spin casting rods are expensive too. They are. Everything's expensive, mm -hmm. but when you get into fly fishing, it's a little bit more expensive. Yes. Right, and it doesn't. It doesn't last, or is that is that the right thing to say that it doesn't last? Doesn't uh, I mean, it's kind of more so the like your flies, right? Yeah, yeah. So flies are. Let's show everybody a fly. This is not a plastic fly, right? This is tied by hand by you. Mm -hmm. What do we call this thing? That one's a redfish crack. This is redfish crack by Captain Rivas right here. This is the one you predominantly use, just a different color, yeah, right? Different color, different uh, weight, just kind of depending on the water we're fishing. Right. So I feel that if I catch the quality of redfish that I'm always into, I'm just kidding again, right? If you catch some qu quality, good redfish, right, it, this fly might not last a long time compared to a plastic lure, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I guess if you catch quality good redfish, trout, anything, anything for that matter, it might not last. But I feel this being a uh, material, hair, fur material, it might not last quite as long. Not as long. Right? Yeah. So you have to expect this to run out. Mm -hmm. Right? So when you go to a fly shop, I can, I can uh, attest to our fly shop. When you buy our flies, you're buying one, right? You go down here, you talk to Mr. Mike Chappie, you talk to Zach Gibson, you talk to uh, Joe Alcala. Who am I missing down there? I think that's it, right? They'll, they'll set you up with the right fly you need, but you're only going to buy one at a time, right? Yeah, you yeah. can buy five, you can buy 10, you can buy the whole thing, but they're not going to come in a pack of five, 10, you're going to buy one, yeah, right? Fine. You have to already, like like your line and stuff. How long does your typical line last? Because <laughs> well, how many lines do we got on the reel itself? So you have your backing, right? Which is, and then you got your fly line. Right. And you have leader as well. Leader, mm -hmm. right? Is leader and tip at the same thing? It's the same thing. The same thing? Yeah. 
right? So typically when you cut your fly off, you're cutting from your tippet, mm -hmm. right? So about an inch, two inch. Yeah. Tippet is what, 10 feet? Uh, typically your tippet is going to be, because you have a butt section as well. Yeah. Right. And then tapered. Yeah, it's tapered. Tapered. Yeah, so your tip is going to be at the very end. So you got, usually it's about three foot. Four feet. Three foot worth of, mm -hmm. until you say, okay, I'm going to take this tippet off. And how much is one one of those tippets? So, I mean, they say little packs, like three packs, and it's like 12 bucks. I, so, I mean, it adds up a lot. Yeah. Do you ever just put mono on it? So, I do build my own leaders. I mean, oh. Being a so, you got a whole bunch of knots on it. Yeah. yeah. A tapered one? Yeah, a tapered knot. Oh, wow. A tapered leader. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Save a little bit of money. Saves a lot. At the same time, right? But at the same time, you know, building that, that it's going to last. It's not going to break. So, I mean, you do run into the problem sometimes. You manufacture defects you never know right something might be a little bit weaker and when you build it yourself you know like hey i made that i trust yeah. my knots i trust that because you know i built it myself yeah do you feel when you i've always said i might be wrong this is ram garcia engineering over <laughs> here right when you when i create a knot mm -hmm. in something i feel the knot is the weakest point mm -hmm. so how does a tip it a tapered tippet with a whole bunch of knots. Good. So, I mean, I, mean, I get you do your own knots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I trust my knots, right? Yeah. Instead of a machine building, yeah. my tapered tippet, right? How, how do you, uh, how do you think that's, that's a good idea? Uh, on the, on the engineering part, I guess. I right. I have never had one break. Oh, really? Yeah. So, I mean, when you make it tapered, you're basically making it where it's easier to cast in the wind so right. with your flies as well. But it's almost like a shock style to absorb shock. So you usually have like in your taper section, a bigger size is smaller. So it kind of like evens out. And then also with your fly line, it's kind of absorbing some of that shock. Mm -hmm. So never really breaks, but <laughs> right. still strong. But if you get like a wind knot, you know, when your line wraps oh, up yeah. on it. And that's a no no. Yeah. A little tension on that part. Yeah. yeah. And snap. Uh, Randy Rubel is in the house, local fly fisherman as well. Pretty, pretty good, pretty decent fly fisherman. Mm -hmm. He says that fly, if tied right, will catch over six fish. I'm using a felt crab that's on the fish 10 and still looks like new. That's pretty damn good, dude. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? There's a lot of stuff, man. I have a vice. I forget what uh what what uh what's the name of the vice. <laughs> but there's some vices that the vice itself is a big deal, right? What kind of vice you got? So I use the Renzetti. Oh, that's the one. That's the good one, right? Yeah, yeah. Renzetti vice. Can we get those vices here? I think we can. Renzetti vice. You can get every single thing we talk about here on the show. You could get here at Roy's Bait and Tackle. So I feel like the vice itself will help out in the, in the in the manufacturing of this fly yeah. right especially with, this is pretty i feel this is pretty a detailed fly right give us the uh what does this fly have on it so starting off with it i have pseudo hair in the back it's kind of like rat fur it's oh. a little bit more dense thicker material and then i have uh some flash here. This is a polar chenille. Kind of just had a little flash, a little skirting around it. And then I have some fox up here in the front, like the collar area. Real fox. Yes. This oh, wow. Fox. So, I mean, everybody has their opinions on different materials yeah. on how they tie things. I like fox because it doesn't absorb, absorb water. Oh. You see some other materials. So, in that, that terms, it makes it float a little bit higher. It right. makes slower. So. That's kind of how I tie mine. And then I got some just, you know, some legs, a little flutter. Yeah. It kind of gets this fish's attention. What is that? Is it like a crab? Is it like a shrimp? It's kind of like a shrimp crab bait fit. It kind of falls in all those categories. Yeah. So, I mean, when the fish see it, their eyes just, they had eyebrows, they'd light up. And yeah. Go they'd be fluttering their eyebrows yeah. to this thing wanting to. <laughs> so, so this, uh, another thing this, this fly has is a weed guard, right? The weed guard. And I'm I'm speaking for the viewers, right? Not for myself, because I'm pretty much a pro at this kind of stuff. 
I'm just kidding. I'm speaking for everybody here. When when I get my fly rod, and I've I've done it, man, Mr. Rivas, I've done this thousands of times. I'm just kidding again. <laughs> I've done it several times to where I see a redfish, and okay, I decided to pick up my fly rod instead of my traditional rod. So I already have the redfish in sight. I pick up my fly rod and I get a damn good cast. And I'm like, dude, it's going to happen, right? It's finally going to happen. This, I, I could see the redfish and it has a tag on it. It's a CCA tag. And I'm about to win me a boat. I'm about to win me a truck. I'm about to win me a trailer. And I might even about to win me some sponsorships along the way, right? By catching this fish. But I'm in super grassy areas. And as soon as I cast this fly, I catch all the grass as well, Yeah. right? And it discourages me. I'm like, dude, why? Yeah. Everything with beads, to me, right? Everything with beads, whether it be these beads, whether it be ceiling fan beads, right? I feel like it immediately goes down, sinks, catches the grass. I want to feel, I, I want like a, a fly that is like a suspending fly. It's got weight so that I could, well, do the beads make it go farther or does your line make it go farther? A little bit of both. A little bit of your both. Line, your line's weighted. Right. So it's going to propel forward. But then uh -huh. also when you put a heavier fly on, it's going to go a little bit faster as well. Just right. Depending on the weight. So there's just a whole bunch of things that have to work mm -hmm. before that fly actually goes. It's all the tempo. Right. You know? get a little rhythm down. Oh, I love that, dude. So, I mean, there's times where, especially with having clients on, they're used to throwing lighter flies if they fish down south. And yeah. I give them a little bit heavier fly because you want to get it down in that range when the fish is right at the front of the boat, you know, right in their face immediately. They throw a heavier fly and their cast is way off because they're not used to throwing heavier things. Yeah. So, it's just getting that rhythm down, feeling what you normally throw on. Like. So, the weed guard is... You got to have a weed guard. You got to have a weed guard. Especially right. Fishing around a lot of grass. I mean, if you're fishing like really thick grass, sometimes, especially like floating grass stuff, it's kind of inevitable. You right. You get grass on it, but not as much. Yeah. The, um, when you said down south, a down south fly compared to an up north, up, up northy fly, your area, Freeport yeah. area, the difference in fly, difference in weights, right? Does that, create a big part in fly fishing or when you say you just got to put this fly in front of it right it's at our toes just drop your rod tip you know what i mean or does that just work with any fly no i mean you're gonna have different flies for different areas like i tie things for if i go down like the port o'connor mm -hmm. i'm gonna throw real light stuff different colors compared to what i normally fish in my local waters mm -hmm. and you know the fish react a lot differently to that versus to what i normally would throw over here right but then my fish back home they like darker stuff they like uh, heavier stuff because they're usually you know nose in the mud yeah so you want to get it down so you want it to the bottom quick quick right i mean if you have a fish 10 feet from the boat you throw this fly right here you might get it in his, you know, range real quick because then you got the boat moving on against it. Right. The wind pushing it. So you want to get it right there real quick, especially if you have a guy that's just you know, struggling to get that cast right in front. Because the short game's tough. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got a nine-foot rod and you're trying to get, you know, two feet of line out. It's it's tough. So when you get that heavy fly, it immediately just goes, gets in the range, instantly hooking up. So right. you want to go with a heavier fly. It's short stuff. So you've caught more than redfish on a fly. I have. What are the different species in fly that you've caught? So I do a lot of freshwater fishing too. Okay. Uh, I mean, I've caught carp. These are those the these different species are all in a different fly as well, right? Yeah. yeah. This fly is predominantly redfish no, or yeah, other uh, speckled trout. Okay. Drum, uh, triple tail. Uh, I mean, anything that eats a shrimp. You now, gar. Gar, alligator gar. Just catch gar with this thing. I caught my biggest alligator gar on one of these flies. How big was it? Uh, it was about six feet. Oh, wow. Big guy. And that was sight casted. Sight casted. Wow, that's you know, pretty cool. High in the water. Sit it right next to their jaws. You got to hit them right in the sweet spot. Yeah. Their cheeks. Uh -huh. And just set real hard and hold on. <laughs> Man, that's pretty cool, dude. Yeah. The, uh, 
have you fished any tournaments? I do. Fly fishing tournaments? Or is it like a everybody tournament and you just decide to fly fish? So I've done both. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, but my main deal is, you know, fly fishing. All right. There's a big one coming up here in Galveston. It's called uh, the Galveston Classic. Okay. So got 50 teams. And that's nothing but fly fishing. Nothing but fly fishing. That's pretty damn cool, dude. I didn't even, I haven't even heard about that. It's a, it's a pretty cool tournament. Big, big tournament in Galveston. You've been fishing tournaments for quite some time? So growing up, I fished conventional tournaments with my dad. Okay. We never did. And it was still fun to be out there. Yeah. You know, competitiveness yeah. with the guy. You know? Yeah. But uh, when I started fly fishing, you know, the guy that kind of was my, I would say my mentor, Brian, he, uh, when I really actually met him, I met him one time fishing some night, some lights at night. And uh, the guy he was with kind of just told him, like, hey, man, that guy comes in the fly shop all the time. You should hit him up. Mm -hmm. So he hit me up, and he's like, hey, I'm looking for a new uh, fly fishing a tournament partner. It's like, hey, man, now sign me up, you know. I'll pull the boat around. I'll fish with you. Right. That's kind of how, like, we started things out, just fishing tournaments. And I've been fishing with them since then in tournaments. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's very competitive. Oh, yeah. I mean, with fly fishing guys, like, I feel it's a little bit more competitive than the uh, conventional. Oh, dude. I thought... We fished a trout tournament years ago, last year, I think, the year before. And it's a total different ball game fishing with a bunch of trout fishermen. Yeah. I can only imagine how different it is fishing with a bunch of fly fishermen. Oh, man, it's, uh, it's a lot different. <laughs> right. I feel like nobody's even drinking beer at one of those events. Uh -huh. There is. Yeah, is it? I got is it? Yeah, All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Kind of loosen up and, you know. <laughs> How do you feel the uh, tournaments have, have gotten I, since you started till now? A lot better. A lot better. I mean, fly fishing community is growing by a lot. I mean, with social media, you know, a lot more people are getting into this hobby of sport. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're starting to go to all these events, and they're wanting to get in these tournaments, you know, meet new faces. And yeah. Competitive. They, you know, they feel that they, their skill level has grown, and they want to you know, send it out there to all the other local guys, other guys that come from out of town and fish. So yeah. it's grown. That's the fastest way to grow your name, I think, is the tournament scene. You know, I, I feel like everybody is in the media scene, mm -hmm. right? From new anglers to old anglers to anglers that aren't even anglers to fly fishermen. Mm -hmm to saltwater fishermen, freshwater. How do you feel the push? And I and it, it's kind of, it, it, this question probably want to be more for a, not a seasoned angler, but because you're more than a seasoned angler, Captain Rivas. But I feel like it would be more push to like a older, and when I say older, I mean like 70. Yeah. Not so much 80 right happy birthday to Roy, mr roy right but i feel like once the uh the push social media push when we get the influx because man it just happened like overnight to where new anglers wanted to be in, in the tournament scene yeah right your opinion right the show's about you not about me Everybody already knows mine. They either know it or they just don't even care about mine. What's your opinion on the influx of, it's hard, this is a tricky one, man, because you can't say new anglers because it's going to happen, yeah. right? New anglers is going to happen, yeah. right? You're going to get into fishing. You're going to have never been into Roy's and you're going to be going to the beach like on senior skip day and you're going to cruise into Roy's and you're going to be like, dude, I got to go pee real quick, you know, stop here at Roy's, you know, and, and you've never gone fishing in your life and you walk into Roy's, you're like, dude, I don't even want to go to the beach anymore. I want to go into back into Roy's and I want to go spend all the, this 20 bucks my parents gave me, you know, I, I want to buy something, you know, and you start talking to Zach and you start talking to, J to Joe and all them and they're like, yeah, do you need to do this? You know, you, you need to start using this and you start using that. And then that, then they're like, dude. What, what's your name? You know, I'm Zach, you know, and I'm Joe. And they go to their social media and they see their pictures and they see somebody else on there and they see, they see Rivas on there. And they're like, dude, look at what Rivas is doing. You know, I want to do that too, you know, but 
Rivas is a captain, right? So now you got somebody else wanting to be a captain in the fly fishing scene. Do you think social media itself is bad for the sport? Uh, and we're not even talking about sponsorships yet. Yeah. That's next, right? But we're going to give away something before we talk about that one. Because I think that one is going to get everybody mad. <laughs> but do you think before before all the sponsorships, before all that, do you think the media scene is a bad idea for fishing? It's a double-edged sword. You're right. You know I mean, it's got its good perks, and it's got its bad perks. I mean, you have a lot of people, too, that are just trying to do it for, you know, the saying, do it for the gram. Yeah. They're not doing it for the sole purpose. Let the gram eat first. Yeah, exactly. Right? So that's where I think, and, you know, a lot of these people that are, you know, either trying to do it for a living or just going out, getting into this new sport, they're doing it for the likes. Right. Know, not the actual true love of the sport. Yeah. That's where I think it's the bad part. Cause then at that point, you start getting people that aren't really appreciating the water, you know, the destroying things. And stuff yeah. Draft. And, you know, they're burning shorelines. Yeah. They're doing all the no-nos. And that's where I think it starts to get bad because nobody's really truly loving the sport anymore. They're doing it for, hey, did you see my post? Did you, did yeah. you like it? Yeah. Right. So that's where I think it's bad. Yeah. yeah. Like, how can I get famous if you didn't like my post? Exactly. One of those deals, right? Yeah, yeah. The, because you're a sponsored angler, right? Who, who are your sponsors? Uh, so right now... uh. Thing. Just say the good one. Uh, At the end of the show, we'll, we'll we'll tell them all. But just give me a good one. A Smith Optics. Smith Optics is is a good one, right? Do you really think? And Smith Optics is sold here as well, mm -hmm. right? Um, do you really think Smith Optics needs social media? Uh, no. I mean, they kind of just you know they sell themselves. Right. You know? right. It's weird, if right? You got a good product. It's gonna yeah. Sell, sell yeah. Exactly. You you know. The um, pro staff, right? Pro staff and sponsorship, right? Yeah, yeah. Why do they need both? Uh, I mean, and I know this wasn't on on our uh, on our uh, on our agenda here, but you know, I told you once the car once one of the car goes <laughs> down, dude, this show gets raw, man. You know, it just gets raw. But because there is a difference in both, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a difference between pro staff. There's a difference between uh, sponsorships, right? Why would a company need both? Your opinion. So with both? You cannot phone a friend. Can't phone a friend? No. Oh, man. I was going to be tough. <laughs> <laughs> so I think with, like, the pro staff, uh, oh, man, that is a tough one because my answer is kind of for both, you know? All right. So it's mainly just because there is both. Yeah, there is. Right. Both. So, I mean, for the most part, it's honestly just if they had you have somebody like who's popular, I guess, on social media and they're pro staff, then, you know, they can post the products and get it out there more to a larger group of people. Right. But then if you're sponsored, you know, like if you're a guide who's sponsored, you know, you're having these products on the boat and these people, you know, are coming and they're strangers, like say glasses. Yeah. They never heard of like low light glasses. And, you know, you let them use them for the thing. They're like, wow, these are game changers. You know that person after your show. Yeah, I could see the damn fish with this thing's on. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's that's my opinion on it. Right. But, I mean, that's what I can think of. Because I see a lot of, like I said, I'm in the kayak, on the kayak side of the industry. I'm a pretty big deal on the kayak side of stuff. Yeah. yeah. I'm just kidding again. <laughs> but I see a lot of the kayak side. Yeah. Right, kayak side of the sport, they love to tag. Oh, they're like like a little pro staff too. Yeah, yeah, they love it, dude. Yeah, and I, I'm one. You know what I mean? I do it. I mean, I do it too. Right, <laughs> we we most of us do it. Yeah. Right, but I feel that the boaters, mm -hmm. right? I'm gonna lose about a thousand followers right now, but it's okay. I feel like the boaters, the sponsored boaters, mm -hmm. right? The tournament angler boaters, the, the, the tournament anglers that are sponsored by some big companies, you don't see them tag anything. No. Right? They don't. But they're sponsored by the biggest, and they get paid the most in the tournament scene. Yeah. It should be the other way around, shouldn't it? 
It should. I, you know, I've wondered the same thing for a while, you know, like they're sponsored by these companies and they don't really push them. And why would it, why does it, does a company want to keep somebody like that? Cause they're, cause they're part of a winning team. Yeah. All right. Whoever's the best. I wonder if they were losing. And this isn't pointing towards anybody. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, but why would, uh, I just don't get it. It's a tough question. Or maybe I do get it. Yeah. But this isn't my show, right? <laughs> it, it's it's um uh, it's weird because you would think that a company would want to push or want to to uh not push, not represent, but back back a an angler that pushes their company. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, exactly. But you see that a lot, right? Yeah, all the time. You know what, dude? Let's give something away, man. What do you think, man? So this. Redfish crack, right? We're going to give not only this one, guys. We're going to give four of them. Four of them away, right? One, two, three, four. This is Captain Gabriel Rivas' hand-tied redfish crack. And it won't only catch redfish. You put this in front of anything, and your hook chances are super high. All right. First person, guys. Everybody's just, holy shit. I'm about to win something. Austin Matthews is, is on his is on his number pad right now. First person. That was a hit. Jump on y'all's number pad, guys. Hey, guys. We go by Royce Bait and Tackle Internet. All right. Everybody has different. You know, he's our two cheese in the house. Caught my first sheep's head with one yesterday. With a redfish crack. Right? Yeah, yeah. Can you buy redfish crack here? Sure. Tied by somebody else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, but this is Gable Rivas. Yeah, this is. This is way better. Oh, yeah. Right. It's got the secret formula. Yeah, if you cannot find Gable Rivas, we have, name a couple flies. When I go down to the fly bar, I think that's what it's called, the fly bar. Yeah, yeah, right? Sure. What is it? There's a redfish crack, deceiver, Deceive. seducer, uh, strong arm crab, gurgler. Poppers, uh, tarantula crab, uh, redfish quan, quan bunny. One more. Just a simple bait fish pattern. I don't know if I can accept that one. What? One more. Give me a good name. EP bait. There you go. Right there. That was just ten that you could get here. Right. Noe's Artucci is is a uh, he's part of our team here. Roy's bait and tackle team and. He brought up a question yesterday on, he had seen something or something that, uh, he was waiting, weighed fly fishing, yeah, yeah. you know, seen something that, that was, he thought it was something, but it could have been nothing, but it was definitely something yeah, yeah. in the water feeding, tarpening, skip, skip Jackie, yeah. Spanish Mackie, yeah. King fishy, mm -hmm. something yeah. feeding, jumping out of the water. We don't know what it was. Yeah, he couldn't get close enough to get a good cast or or see exactly what it was, but it was something, right? Yeah, it's pretty cool. You never know what you're gonna see out there, man. Yeah. You know, especially when you're by yourself. Yeah, that's you know, the craziest thing. yeah. Most of the time, you roll up to these areas, and it's just filled with people or filled with cars, and you go to your spot, and it's already burned up, and now you just gotta go somewhere else. Yeah. You know what I mean? You get off on these wades to where there's nobody, you know, you get to hear what exactly is going on in the water instead of feeling what's in the water. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it brings a whole different. You're a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's give these flies away, dude. First person, first person to tell me how old Mr. Roy is. Today's his birthday. He turned a special age today, and the first person is going to win. I'm already seeing him coming in. He's definitely not 26. <laughs> and we have a winner. We have a winner. The winner is going to win four of these redfish crack flies tied by yours truly, Mr. Captain Gabriel Rivas. And the winner of that is none other 
than Austin Matthews. Austin Matthews is on point every single show. He has been the winner at least 75% of the time. Yeah, yeah. And it's got to be more than that. I want to say 85% of the time, Austin Matthews is the winner. Yeah. That's a. Yeah. That's legit, man. That's legit winnings. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't. That can't be. It's a good success, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it can't be rigged. Yeah. Right? He's got to be the one that's just there first. Yeah. I mean, I gave you all a hint, you know? <laughs> I, I said it in the walk. I said it along the lines. All right, man. Let's, let's keep going. We might give away something else. So, so stay with us here. You know what? I'll give away that fly rod. Yeah. It's a good one. Yeah, it's a good. The only problem is, is how I'm gonna ship this thing. Maybe we have a an extra, an extra shipping box, here, right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe. We'll have to get in contact because that's gonna be a tricky one to ship. It's nothing special, right? But it is a fly rod and it, and it's it's in working condition, and it'd be good to. Uh, Austin Matthews is making a comment here, and he says, give it to J.C. Gonzalez for his kids. Yeah. Man, that's a hell of a, what do you call that? I personally know J.C. Gonzalez, good friend of mine. We went to high school together, and we also, we fly fish together when we were younger. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I said it the last year. I'm going to say it one more time real quick. We used to go to Clems Marina. Here, local pier under the JFK, late night. We didn't know what the hell we were doing, but we looked like it. We looked like we knew what we were doing, you know, and don't tell my parents this, but we would drink a whole bunch of beer, you know, and we were young, you know what I mean? And we'd go and pretend we knew and the way we would get our spots and, and it's pretty bad, dude. We were bad kids, right? The way we would get our spots on the pier is... Because everybody has their favorite spot, right? We would fish the lights under clams with the fly rods. Yeah. And we would start casting, man. And I, I remember so so clearly pissing people off because I was casting my fly. And I, I myself was dodging the fly. You know, I can only imagine what they were thinking. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the best way to get your own spot. Uh-huh. You know, and, and we'd do like, we'd roll it, you know, t- to not have to bring it up. We'd roll it into the light and stuff. Man, well, congratulations, J.C. Gonzalez. He's the winner. First winner was Austin, and, and he decided to give the, his winnings to Mr. J.C. Gonzalez, to him and his kids that are getting into the uh, fly fishing game. I'm going to get this out to you, dude. And I might get get that uh, fly rod as well, right? I just don't know how I'm going to do it. We'll have to figure it out, yeah. right? Moving along, man. Fly fishing, right? Day one. I come into Roy's, it's senior skip day. I got to go to the restroom and I come into Roy's and I got to, I, I walk into the fly department and I'm like, dude, what do I even buy? I see right now when I'm looking down there, I see about 30 rods sticking up in the air. Some have reels, some don't. So that brings another question, which reel, right? Right now I see about, eh, the caps are in my way. So I see about 15 reels. And the 15 reels that I see are over $100, right? I, got, I buy the rod, I buy the reel, I buy the line, I buy the tippet, I buy a six-pack, right, of carbox, yeah, yeah. right? And then I got to buy my fly. Mm-hmm. What is more important? Easy, right? Yeah. You have to make it easy because I want to come back. Right. Don't make it so hard on me because I'm going to come pick up my conventional reel again. Right. Color or presentation? Hmm. That's a tough one. That is a very tough one. Right. They both, they both go both ways. So. I'm your best friend. And I'm like, dude. I say presentation. Presentation? presentation. But the presentation is you or the fly? The fly. Really? Because if you have a paddle tail, it makes its own presentation, yeah, it's right? That little fluttering yeah, thing. right. It's kind of easy. Mm-hmm. Not really, but it's easier, right? Mm-hmm. So when you get a fly that's that's uh, that's going to give me some presentation, what is it doing? So it's fluttering around. 
Poco. Either popping. I can either. Oh yeah. Right. Popper. Uh, we have one that has a bunch of like legs. It's kind of just like drooping down. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Like if you throw in like I know for one for sure is like a like a seducer. It just kind of sinks so dang slow, and it, just, it looks like a little shrimp just kind of just laying there. You know, slow. No weight. No weight. Those are my favorite. It's one of the best ones of the fish. The yeah. classic OG fly. Man, those were deadly in the lights. Oh, man. that's all we oh, used. Cool. We didn't even have a vice. Mm. Vices weren't even created when we started fly fishing. Yeah, I'm just kidding. They were. They were. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was pretty, dude, uh, he made a vice out of a pair of vice grips. Oh wow! Just welded them onto a base. And, man, where there's a will, there's oh, a way. There is, man. They're expensive. The vices. They are. You could get a cheapy one. That's like a like a table clamp type. Yeah, you know. Get them off. The Rinzetti vice, five hundred bucks. Huh? Yeah, just about. Yeah. Right. But six, seven hundred bucks. Yeah, I mean, they, around there. they go up there. They go but up. you get what you need, you do, yeah. and it's quality stuff, mm -hmm. and it's going to make your job fly time awesome. right a whole lot easier. Same with, uh, I mean, most fly, I mean, that goes actually with anything, you know, yeah. what you pay for. You buy it once. Mm -hmm. You buy it once, guys. You know, you're not going to go buy a second vice when you buy the best vice, right? Exactly. Does that make sense? Right. We got it all here. And you could actually ask Mr. Shappy. Or Zach, or Matt, or Diego, or Joe. Give them the give them the opportunity to show you the different vices, right? Hey, I'm gonna be tying this. Hey, well, you know what? You might not need the seven hundred dollar vice. You know, you yeah. you don't even need to flip this thing around. You know, you you, you know you're 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 putting a piece of shoelace on this thing. You know, for gar. You ever tried that? I did at one time. But just the, the like just the big shoelacy yeah. type deal? Yeah, yeah. Does, does it work? It does, but there's a downside to it. Oh, really? Yes. I mean, it gets so tangled up in their teeth. Yeah. It hurt the fish more than anything. Oh, but that's the true. Way, the best way to catch them, especially those little tiny gar, small little hook. Really? You know, because uh, I've done a lot of freshwater fly fishing mm -hmm. those little gar in the creeks and stuff. Yeah. And that's where I did the little shoelace trick. But if you use a little tiny, like, like a carp fly, almost. Those real, like, size 12, size 8, those are the best hooks. Possible. Yeah. They stick. They get in there, and they don't. Oh, yeah. yeah so. Man, I bet you everybody that's on right now is, like, shoelace. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, we used to get some, or nylon rope. Nylon rope. We used to unravel it and tie it onto a, a jig head. Yeah. And throw it out there when we would see one, throw it out there and wait till it would snap in the nylon would get tangled up in their teeth yeah and they wouldn't come off man they wouldn't it's, it's, it's a big deal weird. getting it off yeah you know too right mm -hmm. the uh color man you don't ever see a scented fly no is there a scent a fly fishermen have created no. to put on flies no i mean there's a joke between a few buddies and I, like whenever a fish, you know, like say black drum, like when those big black drum are up on the flat, yeah. they sometimes can be real picky. We always joke around about putting gold juice on a fly. Oh, you know, just you like never, you it. never tried it? No, I never tried it. I mean, most of the time you kind of just go through one or two flies and then, you know, figure them out, you know, if they really yeah. want to eat or not. When they don't want to eat, do you just give up? Pretty much. So there's a saying I have, I switched to a few different color flies. Uh -huh. And then I say, if they're not eating that, they ain't eating. Like a crab imitation, yeah. shrimp imitation kind yeah, of deal? Sort of like a crab is one of my last resorts. And then also a spoon flies on my last. Oh, resort. yeah. And if they're not eating that, they just ain't eating. Yeah. yeah. Those are tough, man. Those are tough, yeah. <laughs> to catch on a, on a lure as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. you almost have to use like a scented sort of something. Something that kind of is a little bit more like natural. To grab like their attention. Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like you know, kind of match the hatch in a sense. Yeah. I'm going to, uh, I've been thinking about this reel and rod, guys. I mean, it's going to be tough. I'm going to post it for Memorial Day. That's a good idea, right? Yeah, yeah. Memorial Day Spool Life Live giveaway is going to be a fly rod and reel combo. Right? That's a pretty good, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to need to clean it up, right? Guys, it's not brand new. It's a hell of a starting rod and reel, though, right? And somebody's going to win it on Spooled Life Live. Where can we find you at? 
You can find me. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, uh, YouTube, Facebook. What's the name on Instagram? It's Tidal Flow Fishing. Tidal Flow Fishing. Mm -hmm. Facebook. Facebook, just Gabriel Rivas. YouTube. YouTube, uh, Tidal Flow Fishing. Snapchatter. No. <laughs> no. Uh, TikToker. I am on TikTok. It's uh, Gabriel Rivas. Gabriel Rivas, you heard it here. If you have ever, it's a big deal. Wanted to go fly fishing. It's a hell of a Father's Day gift. It is. Father's Day is around the corner, right? It's a good uh, Father's Day gift for your significant other, your father, uh, your Sancho, right? They'd love it. You know, they'd keep on coming back, right? Yeah, Definitely. <laughs> the uh, Let's give a shout out to your sponsors. Uh, so shout out to Smith Optics. And uh, that's the only one at the moment. I'm pretty pro staff. But... Let's talk about Smith Optics for a little bit. Your water in the uh, upper coast, right? <clears throat> Dirty water, chocolate, milky, uh, red, ugly yeah. water, right? I'm just kidding. It's pretty. Dirty. It's pretty damn dirty up there, though. Uh, what color lens do you recommend? Usually, green mirror with the bronze. Why? So it kind of. I'm trying to think about like the lens technology, you know, right. trying to get a little. So basically, in a sense, I mean, when you match kind of that tone, because they have the pop, they have the chroma, chroma pop. pop, right? Yeah. So the chroma pop, it kind of what you'll see with those lenses when you kind of match that tone of the water, you those redfish scales like they just pop out, and you can really see the hues of them. Okay, so it's matching the tone of the water. Mm -hmm. What the outside of the of the lens? Kind of or the inside, because they're different, they are. right? The inside of your lens will be a different, which is the which is the part you see through, and the reflective part, which is on the outside, will be different as well. Yeah. So when you shop for lenses, do you go by what's on the outside of the lens, or what's on the inside yeah, of the lens? lens? Inside, right? Yeah. It makes more sense. There's there's not a, there's not many options. There's amber. There's there's uh, copper copper they have uh, blue uh, what else yeah. emerald they do have an emerald one and then my favorite is the low lights like the yellow one yellow. well I'll take that there's two different low lights. oh really there's a pink and the silver and then there's a yellow oh and they do have a silver yeah well. they have gray they have black yeah but typically for you know fishing wise you know you're gonna fall into like four yeah. four different lenses you typically want to use so just coming to the shop and picking up a one set, I can't say picking up a pair of optics because that's two, mm -hmm. right? So picking up, well, how do you even say that? One set, a one set, set is two yeah. also. Or a pair. A pair is two. Pair, yeah, pair is two. Yeah. Yeah. Or you're just picking one. Yeah, just picking up one. Uh, yeah, just one. Get it, one glass. <laughs> yeah, one, if you come to the shop, there's no such thing as that anymore. You can't just come pick up one. No, you got to get multiple. Yeah. If you're going to be fishing different water, but if your water gets dirty. You want a set of, uh, you know, your bronze lenses. Yeah. Also, too, low lights. You know? I want to say mine are amber. They're amber. And that's all I use is amber lens with an emerald reflection tint in, up in the front. I think. Yeah, yeah. We need to get a optics guy yeah, yeah. in here. Yeah, yeah. It gets real technical. Yeah, it's it's technical. But I wonder if optics is like fishing lures to where you could walk the fishing lure aisle and see thousands of colors. Oh, there's so many choices. Yeah. I wonder if that's how optics is. Yeah, I mean. Y'all need to stay tuned because we're going to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> I guarantee it we are. But that's a tricky thing, man. What What color did you say you use? So I use two different lenses. Mm -hmm. I use the green mirror with the bronze insides. Right. And then I use the low light igniters, the yellow lens. Oh, yeah. And I like that one, too. Love them. I, That's for, like, early morning? Early mornings, uh, overcast days. Because, I mean, when it comes to sight fishing, most most people want, you know, bright, sunny skies. Right. But for me, for some reason, dirty water, not dirty water, I'm sorry, but cloud, you know, complete cloud cover overcast days are my favorite. You got your low lights on. You feel invincible. You can spot those fish. And those glasses help so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to have something. Got to. It's, dude, if you get there and you forgot your glasses, you're in for a bad day. You're, you're blind. As Especially a... if it's sun. Mm -hmm. The sun's out. 
What else you got, man? Where, where, Facebook, to get a uh, trip lined up, where, where do they contact you? Any of those outlets? Any of those outlets. I'm in the process of building a website at the moment. Okay. Uh, kind of been busy with running trips and, you know, I'm a dad, so kind of busy with that life. Hey, so. Father's Day, man. Oh, it's yeah. around the corner. It's our turn now. Coming up quick. <laughs> what else you have, man? Nothing else? What's coming up? What's next for Gabriel Rivas? So I was telling you about the tournament. Yeah. The tournament in Galveston called the Galveston Classic. Mm -hmm. It's on June 16th, June 17th, and uh, sort of the next tournament. One of a few tournaments that I fish. Anybody could enter. You can, but it's real popular. It books up fast. They booked up already. Like, oh, time. so once it books up, that's it? That's it. Uh, 50 teams. That's it. 50 teams max. Yep. Oh, wow. Yep. That's pretty cool. They booked up in an hour. I like that, man, because... Oh man, dude, I could go on for years with this conversation. But I feel what's the entry fee on that tournament? The entry fee, I think it's 300. Don't See, quote me on that. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I like a, I like me more a $300 fee than a $50 fee. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, one cool side to it too is you know you get like a goodie bag and stuff. Yeah, oh, cool those bar. days are all gone, man. Yeah. Dude, I remember fishing tournaments, and you would get a swagger packer bag, mm -hmm. right? You'd get fed, right? Yeah. You know, you'd you'd uh, the tournament director would come shake your hand. You know, he knew you. Yeah. He knew you by your first name. You don't get that no more. Down, it's almost like it's for the money now. That's what it. Yeah, I did. I did experience that a lot, especially like in conventional tournaments. Mm -hmm. Hey, you got your fee, pay it, and that's it. You know, it was the yeah. hospitality behind it. I mean, with these fly tournaments, it's a little yeah. bit more one on one. Everybody knows your name, and on top yeah. of it, you know, you get that goodie bag. They feed you. You get to hang out with your buds. You know, talk about your fishing day. Yeah, and all the stories. Drink a whole bunch of carbock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your your polar. What, what do you call him in the back? A polar? Yeah, in the back. So we do switch off. You know? I mean, what do you just call him? Polar? Uh, the guy on the platform, polar. The guy on the platform just has holes all over him? Yeah. Does he just drink a whole bunch of carbox? Yeah, he's right. fueling up, getting his polling fuel. Uh -huh. <laughs> man, that's pretty cool, man. The uh, the tournaments now that I I, I could be wrong. Maybe uh, Mr. Rubel could help us out here. I don't think there's a fly fishing tournament specific tournament that ha that's here in our area or is there there not here it's in port o'connor every year it's called ah. Bracho pescador man even port o'connor's two hours away yeah it's from far. here it's far <laughs> down south here i don't know of any other tournament there. oscar captain oscar estringle says you will if you fish the lower laguna redfish series okay yeah roy and family is first class I want to say that they have a Waymaster for that series that's Gulf Coast Waymaster Services. And I highly recommend, if somebody tells me, hey, you want to fish a tournament, who's the Waymaster? Right? Yeah, yeah. Is it just some, like my next door neighbor or somebody, you know what I mean, or something? Or is it like a proven, certified, bona fide, ramified, Waymaster, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, it's a big yeah. deal, dude. Yeah. Waymaster is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Hard, right? Yeah. Golf Coast Waymaster Services keeps it flowing, keeps it right, keeps it on point, keeps the anglers on point. You know, if you roll up there with something fishy, it ain't going to fly, dude, with Gulf Coast Waymaster Services, right? They, they're on point. You ever fished a tournament with them? No. I Alex Guetta and, and uh, Waymaster Services? I haven't heard of them. Before. Good people, man. Good people, good stuff. If, if I guarantee y'all guys that are watching the uh that want to get into the tournament scene, if you want to see, just see, right? They're low, they're low. Hundred bucks. Man, you're gonna spend that on a weekend anyways. A hundred yeah, exactly. bucks. Yeah. Go and watch some of the professionals fish in, in a professional way master environment, how it how it's uh driven, and you'll see the difference, man. That's a tournament that I'd want to not get fed, and I'll just go see Alex Geta and his staff work their magic, right? Pretty good stuff. What else you got, man? Man, 
for the most part, I think that's pretty much it about me. Like, Mel, well, you've been doing a hell of a job. Thanks. Thank, thank you so much for coming on the show. Man, thank Nobody you. updated us with the Rothstown Cotton Picker score. Man. So I don't know if uh, if we do, if, if we skipped over a question, guys, I'm sorry. I'm just amazed by my guest's artwork, right? <laughs> what what is this? Tell us a little bit about it. Oh, uh, my tattoos. Yeah. Uh, so this. I think you're our first guest. Our last guest had a quite a few tattoos too, but you are like our guest tattoo guest, right? <laughs> so I've got like most of my entire body tattooed. Uh, well, almost. I just have my back left, but uh, I've got this arm. It's just like some geometric. It's kind of just like random patterns, and then this stuff is just like traditional American. Oh, okay. So. None of it really has too much of a meaning. It oh, yeah. It kind of just looked cool. Yeah. You know, and just kind of kept adding on and adding on and kind of yeah. became a little addiction. And, yeah, I like you it. I've got the rest of my body. And there's only a few tattoos that I truly have meaning on me. Oh, yeah. I have a redfish tail. Can't really see it on camera. Oh, yeah. But as an R on it, my grandpa's name was Raymond. He passed away. Oh, okay. So kind of got that as a little yeah, kind of different. significance there. Significance yeah. That's pretty cool. I have, I myself have a little bit of tattoos, but I'm not going to tell you all where they're at, <laughs> right? I got some that are showing here on my arm. And it's the, I want to get more, man, but it's expensive too. They're very expensive. How much money do you have in tattoos right now? Thousands. Thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars. Wow. Yeah. You're going to eat and you plan on getting more of your back and your neck and I'm finishing the front, your face no. and stuff? Not my face. No. Uh, I'm going to stop at my back. I got all my legs. Uh, and then one day, maybe eventually I'll get like my neck. But for the most part, I like to be able to wear long sleeves, kind of just hide the fact that. I yeah. Have, you know? Yeah. Except on your hands. Except on my hands. Yeah. That's the only part. But a lot of people don't realize I have tattoos when they're on the boat. Oh, yeah. So I would pull up. I'm wearing gloves. Oh, that's right. Buff. So most people, they see like nose piercings. And that's it. They're like, holy shit. But they shit. run into me in public and they're like, gay rule? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. That's like, uh -huh. And they're just kind of shocked. So it's always kind of funny, you know, seeing that expression on their face. Like, yeah. Oh, you look completely different off the water. I'm like, yeah, I get that question. Man, but you're real. Well, from, from this is the first time we've ever spoken. Yeah. Right. But you're real, like, genuine. Right. I feel the uh, passion that you have for fly fishing. I love it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think I've ever had a guest. And I don't plan on having a guest, for that matter, that uh, would bring the negativity to the sport. But. I could feel it to where you like that. You like that stuff. You like this stuff. I you know what I mean? Man. Like one thing too, like, you know, I've caught so many redfish on the fly. And I didn't, at one point didn't think I was going to be doing this for a living. I do this full time. But the most rewarding thing with becoming a guide is seeing people who've never caught them on the fly, get that experience and me experiencing that. I love it. Right. Every single day I see that. And it I mean, breathes a joy to my heart. Yeah. That's the coolest thing. Cause I caught just them being excited about yeah, it. that excitement, you know, yeah. either one fish, 10 fish, you know, however the day goes, it changes back and forth. But seeing yeah. that, you know, they truly that experience. I love it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm catching fish from the platform for them, you know? Yeah. I've seen them hooking up. You're like the shot. captain. Yeah. Well, you are the yeah, captain, the but, captain, but then you're like the captain yeah. that's instructing these guys when, because dude, I fished with people and not saying I'm a captain, right? I might be. Right. Yeah, yeah. I fish with people. I'm like, dude, it's right there. You know, dude, there's one right there. And the guy was like, dude, how do you see these things? Yeah. And I'm like, man, well, you got to buy these glasses, you know, and yeah. we'd go and we'd come to Roy's and we'd buy some glasses. And the next time we'd be out and we'd be like, dude, I can't, I still can't see them. It it's is. a big deal it is. to where you could tell your client, okay, he's 60 yards away. And you're like, dude, I can't even see 60 yards away. No, he's coming. Get your, get your rod ready. You know, calm down. Hey, calm down. You know, you almost tripped over the platform, <laughs> you know, relax a little bit, relax, yeah, yeah. right? Relax. That's hard to do with somebody that has, for one, never fly fished. For two, has never caught a, red, a fish yeah. or red fish, but you know, he's going to have a good time catching. Yeah. It's a big deal to get in that mindset to where I'm excited. Yeah. You know, I'm on the platform and I see this thing and I'm like, dude, Put your rod up. I'm going to catch this fish because I've never seen a fish this big in front of me yet. You know, I'm fixing to get my personal best too. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a big deal to to guide that client 
into something that he's never done before. Oh, yeah. I mean, so like I was telling you with our dirty water, it's tough. Even with, you know, your glasses on and everything. And I'm so used to seeing that fish in dirty water. Guys, locally, we say you have your Galveston eyes. And uh, oh, yeah. we spot a fish. And I even had guys, you know, they've been doing this for years. You know, they know how to sight fish. No problem. But then they fish our waters and they're kind of lost, you know, <laughs> not knowing what to look for. And I'm on the back. And I'm like, hey, you got a fish at 11 o'clock. 40 feet coming in quick right against the shoreline i don't see him and all i saw back there was the slightest tail flip come out of the yeah. water or just a little hue of him coming along and they cast exactly where i want them to and they hook up immediately and they just are shocked they're like <laughs> what how did you see him i'm like i've got a special side of eyes back there. yeah you know, i'm used to it and that's the coolest most exciting and that's why it's so expensive it is you know the the just having you out there you know what i mean not necessarily you. I mean, we're not talking down to the rest of the guides are out there. It cannot just be getting your captain's license and taking people out to fish, right? There's some experience behind it. Yeah. You got to put some time. It's a big deal. It is. Lots of time on the water. Yeah. You know what to look for. Man, dude, it's been a hell of a show. Game starts at 5. All right, so we got plenty of time to make it to the baseball stadium. Does it start at 5? Because we were at a soccer game earlier, and there was people that were going to leave from the soccer game to the baseball field to reach the game on time. Maybe, right? I could say a lot more about I-9 sports right now, but I'm not going to. But uh, hopefully they're watching and they delete me. <laughs> Though That would be one that I would be gladly take the de the delete from right long story that's another show in itself but it's been a hell of a show man thank you, thank thank you so much for coming in to the uh spooled life live studio it's a huge accomplishment you have a huge you have several huge accomplishments already but just being here is a huge accomplishment in itself thanks right <laughs> you're doing great man keep keep up the good work keep up the the uh push for knowledge right Learn something every day. Exactly, man. Everybody that graduated, guys, it begins now. Don't ever let somebody else pick the colors on the por portrait you're coloring of yourself, if that makes any sense, right? Yep. It starts here, guys. Y'all thought high school was bad? It's going to get a lot worse. It's going to get a lot better in the long run, but it's going to get a lot worse. <laughs> for the short end, right? Yeah. But y'all are doing good. Congratulate all the uh, Ropstown graduates, the Sinton graduates. They're on edge right now. They're over there hoping their baseball team advances. I want to say Sinton softball team. The girls softball team has already advanced. I'm not too sure. Put it in the comments, right? If if they did. Um, the Ropstown Cotton Pickers, of course. First, you must believe we got it. We got them. We got them on us today on me, keeping me nice and cool, you know, keeping me nice, uh, ready to go. You know what I mean? Pride, prideful, right? And my alma mater. Thank you so much. The next flyer will kick out, I'm thinking, tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. We got a back-to-back -back shows this uh, month to, to, get, to get the shows in. The uh, the giveaway for the rod and reel, I'm going to post it up. It is a used rod and reel, but it would be perfect for the upcoming angler, right? I'm going to post some pictures. If you are interested, then uh, we'll give it away to somebody, right? Thank you all so much. We'll see you all next time. Follow Captain Gabriel Rivas, Instagram, Facebook. TikTok. TikTok, YouTube. And that's it. Evan. And that's about it. He'll set you up on a fly fishing trip of, a, of your lifetime. See y'all later.